Hey, it's me, Rosie, and I am back with Tantric Tips with Rosie Betts. Do, 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 do. Okay, like and subscribe if you are into this thing that I do. This week, I am back with five tips to love your body right now as it is. Okay, we are deep into new year, new you, weight loss, change everything bullshit, which is the new year of every year and also 2021. So I'm here to tell you right now that your body, just as it is, is beautiful. It's beautiful, it's amazing, and it is worthy of love. And then you're sitting back there going, Rosie, you don't know me, you haven't seen my body. Well, I have worked with hundreds of people, hundreds of people around body love, and I have been privy to, I would say, probably thousands of naked bodies at this point in time. Yay me, I am having the best life and made the best career choices. So I've seen a lot of bodies, um, all ranges of sizes, ages, ethnicity, gender presentation. And you know what? I did not ever see a naked body that I wasn't just like, oh. I think Ram Dass says this and it's so true and it's so beautiful. You don't look at a tree and say, well, you know, you're a willow, but you're not an oak. So I'm not really into you, right? Like you look at a tree and you say, you're a tree. And the next tree, oh, you're a different tree. And the next tree, oh, you're a different tree, right? And they all have beauty and it's beautiful that they are unique and different, each and every one. And our bodies are the same. Now, we live in a society that really does not connect us with them. We are youth obsessed, we are white obsessed, we are thin obsessed. You know, you really have to conform to a certain standard of beauty in order to feel some level of approval. And even if you do, often people are feeling like they are striving but never achieving the beauty that is the standard. So for me, you know, this is something that has been really deeply important in my life and I have a lot of privilege. You know, I'm white, I am, you know, my weight fluctuates but I think it's still within the realm of what people would consider maybe standard. Um, I'm not super young anymore, but I'm a hot mid forties. You know, I have pretty privilege. I have rosy bits, my kids call it rosy bits privilege. I have a lot of privilege. And this is something that is still needs to be my regular practice. Like I don't stray from it. I don't just be, feel like, oh, I feel amazing in my skin every single day. No, I have to do a regular practice to still feel amazing. And I have to tell you, Honestly, when I left my last relationship, I was probably at my lowest self-esteem around my body and my physical appearance. I left feeling, yeah, like I had a huge hit in my self-esteem. I didn't feel sexy. I didn't feel beautiful. Um, I was feeling old, frumpy, unseen, all those things. Um, and I've really done much work in the last year and a half, I had to really take my own medicine that I've been giving for about 15 years, start really taking it again. So I'm gonna tell you succinctly today to start, how to start really connecting with your body again and feeling better. And let me tell you, these practices are simple, but if you do them, they're gonna work and you're gonna feel better in your skin really quick. So practice number one, change your social media. Change the media that's coming into you. Stop buying, if you buy a Cosmopolitan magazine or you know, those types of fashion magazines, I was obsessed with them in my youth. Um, the big thing was to get like the Vogue and the Cosmo and sit on my bed and read it. No, don't do that, don't do that bullshit. Look at what you're being fed, look at, curate your Facebook, your Instagram, like anywhere where you are getting messages around what type of body you should have, or you're seeing visuals of people's bodies, you need to change that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna change it to people that look like you and people who are diverse, right? So what I noticed when I started to like really get back into having to do some accountability practices for myself around my loving my body is that I had a wonderful, I have a wonderful social network, but because I've taught so many beautiful young people, like people in their early 20s, Everything I was seeing, even though I had weeded out a lot of the negativity, I was also only seeing, you know, gorgeous people in their 20s. And I'm a woman in her mid 40s who's had babies, you know, who has lived a full life. So I needed to switch that up. I still have all those gorgeous young people, but now I have people who look a lot more like me, 
people who are 40 plus, so I'm seeing those sexy bodies. I have a lot more diversity as far as size. I have a lot more diversity as far as color. I went through and was like, wow, this is hella whitewash. That's also not good for me to see. It's, I believe it is through seeing our own uniqueness by seeing a variety of different bodies around us that we start to actually feel good. We first need to see people who look like us. Like I need to see older women with stretch marks and cellulite and wrinkles and all that being sexy in their skin. And then I needed to see a real diverse array of bodies so that I could see, hey, somewhere within this, when I find all these different types of people beautiful, I, my body must fit in somewhere. My look must fit in somewhere, right? And you start to get the messaging. So be really conscious also about who you're following um, so that you're getting appropriate messaging. And man, I just love, there are some tremendous people out in the social media world who are just fighting for radical self-love and, and to really normalize normal bodies. So type in normalize normal bodies, type in the body is not an apology, type in radical self-love and see what comes up. And there are like some incredible people who are really, you know, showing you true, the truth of what it is to be in a body rather than just the Instagram version. Um, so yeah, number one, change what's coming into you as much as you can. Okay, number to take a look at what you got. It is amazing to me how many students I have come into my classes and they have not looked at their naked body in a very long time, sometimes years, like years before they, since they've really taken a deep look. So I want you every day, daily practice, get naked in the morning. If you don't sleep in the, the buff, take off your, all your clothes and look in a full length mirror at your body, all angles. So if you're feeling really shit about your body, this is gonna be cringeworthy to start. This is gonna be harsh. You are gonna zone in right away on all the parts that you dislike. Your internal critic is gonna go crazy. I want you again, hang up the phone on your internal critic. You, they don't need to be there, you don't need them. Click. And I just want you to take in neutrally what you're seeing. Just start to have some neutrality and start getting used to seeing your body naked. Just see it, feel it. I often like, well, I'll feel it. I'll look, I love my breasts. So I'll be like, oh, hey there. Hey there, sexy boobs. You know, I always get down on my cell cellulite. So maybe I'll be like, oh, cellulite. Um, but just have some neutrality as to, far as seeing the vessel that you live in, the vessel that you experience life in. Okay, can you do that? I think you can. Okay, number three, move. Start to move. Oh my God, this is huge. So if you don't have a movement practice already, get one. And that movement practice can be putting on your favorite song and having a little dance party by yourself for five minutes. It doesn't have to be like, I just did an like hour of yoga or fancy dance classes or whatever. No, just move your body. So one of the things that has, the pandemic has actually been amazing for me is that I've had so much nature time this year, which has been incredible. And actually I started that way back in February in Bali and then in New Zealand before the pandemic took over our lives. I just got used to walking every day again, to being in the sunshine, to swimming as much as I could, to being naked outside as much as I could. And it's carried through. So right now while I'm doing this video, I said we're in January and early in the new year, it's cold, I can't really be naked outside or it's super not pleasant for me. But every day I can't, when I can, I am outside walking and moving. And when I can't, I'm inside at least stretching, at least five minutes of stretching just to move my body. Because when you move your body, you get present in this vessel again, right? The rest of the time we live up here and all of that you know, chatter around what's wrong with us is here. It's not here. When we are deeply entrenched in just being in this physical space, we feel good, well, or we feel bad. We get to feel actually what is ex happening in our body. So we get to feel the aches and pains, but we also get to feel the joy of being out in the sunshine or feeling the wind and the rain on our face or feeling that pull when we stretch. 
right? And if you look at little children, they're not worrying like, oh, I feel weird, I'm a bit, you know, my body's, um, they're just like, oh, wow, I get to move like this and this feels great and I wanna dance and I wanna jump and I wanna climb that tree. So uh, give yourself permission to get in that body and get in that child space again, that space of just purely being in the joy of being in this vessel, right? Whatever that looks like to you. So figure out something physical that is going to be your daily practice and do it. Okay, I think that was three. Yeah, I'm going to check my notes. Oh yeah, number four, start a gratitude journal about your body. So I have clients who come to me or students that come to me and they hate literally every single thing. They're like, I hate everything. I can't see anything valuable about my body. So if you're in that spot, I hear you. I hear you and that is a hard spot to be in and I'm not here to convince you out of that that will be your own process but I am here to say how about starting from a place of gratitude that you're just alive how about st starting from a place of gratitude that your heart is beating right if you're here watching or listening to this video no matter what shape your body's in you're alive and there's something to be grateful for if you are able-bodied, you have even more to be grateful for, right? If your body can run, can dance, can walk, right? Can stretch, can make love, can give you orgasms, can give other people orgasms. There are many, many things to be grateful for. If you have a relatively healthy body, you can quickly make lists upon lists of all the things you can be grateful for because our bodies are like universes. Like it is so miraculous. We are such fragile little beings. It is so miraculous that we wake up and are alive every day. There is so much that goes into us being alive that start to list that when you get into looking at all the parts of that, like it's really hard not to feel awe for what your body is doing. And it just does it without your conscious intent. It shows up and keeps us going and it doesn't even matter how much we abuse it, how much we hate on it, how much we shove things in it that we shouldn't, toxic food, alcohol, drugs, whatever, you know, the types of things that we do or we extremely diet or we extremely exercise, all those things that hurt our body, our body wakes up every day and does its best to get into full health and carry us through that day. So start a gratitude journal about that. Start listing the things that your body does to keep you alive. And then as you're able to unfold and experience that awe, start to also list the other things that you love. Like I mentioned, I love my boobs. I'm like Benjamin Button in the boob department. They start growing at 30, 39. They look better than they did when I was 16. I have stunning boobs, I have great breasts, so I'm always like, yay boobs. But also too, lately, like earlier today, I was looking at my arm and my friends, I have a friend who tells me I have beautiful skin all the time and I was like, oh, I'm freckly and whatever. But I was looking, I was like, yeah, I do have beautiful skin. It's really light, it's luminescent, wow. So catch yourself in the act of appreciating yourself and just enjoy it, write it down. Okay, that's number four. Let's get to number five. Oh yeah, this is my favorite one. I'm a tantrika, of course it is. Start a sensual practice. So this could be a whole range of things. What I used to recommend to people is to, you start a masturbation practice. You start self-pleasure every day or every second day. Do what feels appropriate. But now what I say is start a sensuality practice because not everybody feels comfortable and not all people are sexual people. We've got a whole spectrum of asexual people, um, but I don't want anybody to be left out. So everybody are or have the capability to be sensual creatures. So every day start a sensuality practice. That could mean being very present to eating some delicious food. Right? That could mean, um, like I love things where I'm including many senses. So one of my favorite things is to take a bath, like a bubble bath or a bath in like beautiful aromatherapy or bath bombs and have candles lit and I have incense burning 
and then I come out and I give myself a massage with a beautiful body lotion or body oil, right? Like that for me would be part of my sensual practice. For you, it could be giving yourself a foot massage and it could be self-pleasure because man, oh man, I feel, I feel like the queen after I've had a couple orgasms. Like that has been so healing, bringing me back to really appreciating my own beauty and feeling sexy again was really starting to, you know, I needed to bring back into my own life my sexual practice, my sexual tantric practice and bring that out into the world, take that incredible energy of what it feels like to self-pleasure and then put on clothes afterwards. So rather than doing say late at night, I would do it in the morning or in the afternoon and then dress myself up and feel sexy and sax sassy after my self-pleasure practice and start to feel into my beauty and my sensuality, my sexuality again. So some type of sensual practice that works for you and feel free to um, ask me questions because I'll help you brainstorm. It's my favorite. Okay, so there's simple five tips. I guarantee that if you do these consistently, you're gonna feel better about your body. If you start this as just simple practices that you do every day or even a couple times a week, you are gonna feel better in your skin. And I'm gonna remind you that this vessel is not all of you. And it's certainly not the most important part. Who you are in the world. Oh, there's my little pupper. He's got a bit of a rough vessel. He's the cutest ever, but has many different things happening. So who you are in the world, how you show up in the world, the energy of your heart, the energy of your mind, these are far more important than this physical vessel. And at the same time, you deserve to feel fabulous inside your skin. And you should, you should be in joy and awe because it's good to be here. When we can get into this body, we can be present. We can be present in this world and it's pretty miraculous, even with all the crazy things that have gone on, even with all the things we're living through. It's a miraculous place to be. So I wish you love. I wish you happiness and joy and your own true nature, which is bliss. Okay, I'll see you next week. Love you.